It is Wednesday, July 22nd. I'm Sam Cedar. And I'm Lucy Steiner. Which one of these stories will you be talking about today? The United States recorded 1,000 deaths in a single day for the first time in this month, right as expanded unemployment benefits are about to expire, and Trump admits that the virus will get, quote, worse before it gets better. Meanwhile, a Republican representative from Florida fully lost it at Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, calling her, quote, fucking bitch on the Capitol steps. And lastly, Twitter announced that it would be cracking down on QAnon conspiracy accounts on its service. You know what they say, better three years late than never. You're listening to Majority.fm's AM Quickie. And these are the stories you need to know. The U.S. logged 1,000 coronavirus deaths in a day for the first time in July on Tuesday. That's a long way from the peak of New York City epidemic, which pushed the country to a staggering 2,752 deaths in a day. But now the increasing wave of death is nationwide, not confined to a few hotspots. The rising death toll and sinking poll numbers prompted a slightly different press conference from Trump today, where he admitted that, quote, it will probably, unfortunately, get worse before it gets better, end quote. He also urged everyone to get a mask. Clearly, someone has realized that if he continued his current path of denial and disruption, there's no way he stands a chance in November. But though credulous commentators claimed once again that Trump was taking on a new, more somber tone, he had just been ranting on Twitter about the China virus, Michael Flynn, and mail-in voting. They may have calmed him down for one presser, but please, don't be fooled by the new act. All of this is happening as the American working class is about to get slammed. The expanded unemployment benefits passed as part of the coronavirus relief package are set to expire at the end of July, just over a week away. According to the New York Times, that means more than 20 million Americans could see their weekly income fall by half or more. New York Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez weathered a shockingly blatant and vulgar attack from a colleague on Tuesday after Republican Ted Yoho accosted her on the Capitol building steps. Yoho, in typical Republican fashion, took issue with AOC's accurate analysis that systemic causes like poverty and unemployment might be driving a rising crime wave in New York City. According to The Hill, which first reported the exchange, Yoho told AOC she was, quote, disgusting, and then said, quote, you are out of your freaking mind, end quote. AOC told him he was being rude in the two parted ways. But as Yoho was walking away, The Hill reports that he said, quote, fucking bitch. The epithet wasn't said directly to AOC, but it's pretty clear who it was describing. Yoho is now trying to spin the thing, of course, with a spokesperson saying that he used a barnyard epithet to describe her policies, not her. Sure, I'm sure that's what he meant. The confrontation is shocking in its sexism, of course, but even outside the context of a spat between two professional politicians, it's telling. If correctly analyzing the systemic roots of crime gets Republicans so riled up, It's pretty clear that their party has zero desire to change things for the people that crime actually affects. Instead, like every other problem, their solution is to throw more cops at it. For the past two months, we've been seeing in real time how that goes. Majority.fm's AM Quickie is fueled by JustCoffee.coop. Just Coffee is a worker-owned coffee roaster based in Madison, Wisconsin, that has sponsored the Majority Report for nearly a decade. Check out their collection of fair trade roasts, including our own Majority Report blend. And regardless of what you order, receive 10% off your order when you use the code Majority at checkout. And all shipping is free. That's coupon code Majority at JustCoffee.coop. In news we should have gotten years ago, Twitter finally decided to do something about the rampant abuse of its platform by QAnon conspiracy cultists. On Tuesday night, the platform banned 7,000 QAnon accounts and restricted 150,000 others. This according to NBC News. Most of the outright bans came down on accounts that had violated Twitter's harassment policies or their policies against using multiple accounts to evade suspensions. The big step is that the platform will stop recommending QAnon accounts to users who follow similar accounts. That's a big step in stopping these accounts from spreading to users and limiting the reach of the conspiracy, and it's frankly shocking 
it's taken Twitter this long to do it. But hey, QAnon has been around only since 2017, so it's only had about almost three years to spread unchecked around the internet. Better late than never, I guess. And now for some quicker cookies. Quicker quickie. The Justice Department accused two Chinese hackers of trying to steal coronavirus vaccine research data on behalf of their government. The DOJ's complaint notes that this is part of a years-long effort to steal U.S. technology. But there's no question that the story fits very conveniently into the Trump administration's efforts to scapegoat China for our own country's terrible pandemic response. And then there's that other question of maybe we should just share the vaccine? Ohio House of Representative Speaker Larry Householder and four of his close associates and colleagues were arrested on Tuesday after a bribery investigation involving a $1 billion nuclear bailout plan and dark money payments to a shell company set up by the Speaker. Ilhan Omar's primary challenger, Anton Melton Moe, has some extremely weird spending habits. Namely, that nearly 65% of his campaign spending has gone to three strange anonymous companies. That means it's very difficult to tell who's actually being paid by the campaign, as the anonymous companies could be paying out to basically anyone. And lastly, the Trump administration is still attempting to use the 2020 census to crack down on immigrants and undocumented people by introducing a provision that would mean undocumented people are not counted. This, of course, goes against the Constitution, which explicitly states that all people in the country at the time of the census, not citizens, be counted. Folks, the majority report will be off today, and we may, in fact, be off again tomorrow. Not sure. Still mourning the loss of our colleague and friend and comrade, Michael Brooks. Yesterday, we did a four-hour stream in which we talked about, Michael. We encourage you to check that out and to go back and look over some of Michael's uh, best moments on the show. Also, check out the Michael Brooks Show for some of his in-depth reporting on international issues, labor issues, and issues important to the working class across the board. We are missing you, Michael, and we will continue to do so for a very, very, very long time.